the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is Father John Zolsdorf. Each day during Advent, I'm offering a five-minute podcast to help you in your observance of this important liturgical season. Advent is a time to prepare for the coming of the Lord. From Dogma und Verkündigung by Joseph Ratzinger. Mary, the undefiled handmaid of the Lord. Her message is the feminine willingness to receive and to conceive. At the Rorate High Mass of Ember Wednesday in Advent, the Gospel of the Annunciation and the miraculous conception of the Holy Child is read. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. She was betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel entered and said, Hail to thee, full of grace. This is one of the stellar moments in world history, for here and at this spot, and in the fullest sense, the presence of God began indeed. Here, in truth, Advent came about. But let us be aware that this stellar moment in world history was at the same time one of its quietest moments a moment overlooked, not reported in any newspaper, nor mentioned in any magazine, nor would it have been reported if such means had then been known. What we are told here is, therefore, first and foremost, a mystery of stillness. What is truly great grows outside the limelight, and stillness at the right time is more fruitful than constant busyness, which degenerates all too easily into mindless busy work. All of us in this era when public life is being more and more Americanized are in the grip of a peculiar restlessness which suspects any quietness of being a waste of time, any stillness of being a sign of missing out on something. Every ounce of time is being measured and weighed, and thus we become oblivious to the true mystery of time, the true mystery of growing and becoming, stillness. It is the same in the area of religion, where all our hopes and expectations rest on what we do, where we, through all kinds of exercises and activities, painstakingly avoid facing the true mystery of inner growth toward God. And yet, in the area of religion, what we receive is at least as important as what we do. Oh, if no other duty lay upon us but to praise the Lord our God with our whole heart and voice. Oh, if thou never hadst need to eat or drink or sleep, but wert always able to praise God and to give thyself to spiritual exercises alone. Then shouldst thou be far happier than now, when for so many necessities thou must serve the flesh. Oh, that these necessities were not, but only the spiritual refreshments of the soul, which, alas, we taste too seldom. When a man hath come to this, that he seeketh comfort from no created thing, then doth he perfectly begin to enjoy God. Then also will he be well contented with whatsoever shall happen unto him. Then will he neither rejoice for much, nor be sorrowful for little. But he committeth himself altogether and with full trust unto God, who is all in all to him, to whom nothing perisheth nor dieth. But all things live to him and obey his every word without delay. Remember always thine end, and how the time which is lost returneth not. Thomas a Kempis Thank you for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another Advent cast. In the meantime, please pray for me as I will for you. <laughs>